And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our study of Ephesians chapter 3 with the second part of a two-part message titled, Unto Him That Is Able. We glory in just the fact we know the Lord. Ain't nothing special about any of us. Ain't nothing special. I'm no more special than you. I'm not, you know... Anything other than a sinner saved by Amen. the grace of God. Amen. And so all of us have this shared reality. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. You should be in hell. I should be in hell. We deserved hell. We deserve, I deserve hell. We earned death. I earned death. But God has saved us. Amen. Amen. Man, if everybody who's professing Christian could get a hold of that truth. Amen. The glory is not in the church itself, but is to be found in the Lord of the church. Amen. I am not the Lord of the church. Amen. No deacon is the Lord of the church. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is Lord of the church. Amen. And that's why it says, Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. Disciples' prayer. It's falsely called the Lord's prayer. Yes. But the disciples' prayer ends in verse 13 of Matthew 6 saying, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 That's not practically speaking the prayer if Christians today, in this age especially, are honest. They would pray, for ours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're supposed to have this attitude. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. By the way, new versions delete that from the disciples' prayer. Yes, they do. In that, it's ironic that we live in a day where the church uh, organism is the focus and building a kingdom on earth is the focus yeah. and they put out new Bible versions so that they can make money they put copyrights on them so that they can make money and they delete that from their Bible they make the glory and the kingdom about the here and now yeah. and on that same note look at the end of verse 21 in your text The end of the verse in your King James Bible says, Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Warning! <laughs> Another example of how the new versions corrupt the Word of God. The King James Bible says, Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. I love that. Yes. That's t shirt material, bumper sticker <laughs> material. Amen? Amen. But here's what the ESV and the NIV also. And Ephesians 3.21 says, Throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That's quite a difference. Yeah. Let's compare the two side by side. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And it goes, they change it from ages to generations, forever and ever. Amen. You see, that corruption destroys your understanding. So trash it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I said it before, I'll say it again. If there's ever a revival in America, it'll be known by the book burnings. Amen. New versions make me feel like this. <laughs> Literally. I'm looking this stuff up and it just makes me sick to see what they've done to the Bible in the name of new versions. Now let's close by seeing that there is a new world to come that will never end. Why would they want to delete that? Because it's becoming a humanistic religion. Christianity, evangelicalism is becoming a humanistic religion. It's becoming a religion of human potential. It's becoming new age. It's preparing for the Antichrist. Focusing on the end of verse 21, 
world without end. Amen. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Scripture clearly condemns this present world as evil. So, thankfully, this world itself isn't going to go on forever and ever. Can you say amen? amen? I mean, that's the whole point. <laughs> there is a world to come. And when a preacher says otherwise, he's infected by Vaticanus. You may not know this, but Vaticanus is a deadly virus spreading throughout evangelicalism today. Vaticanus is the source of all new versions. They translate the corrupt Vaticanus Codex from the Vatican in Rome. And they infect all these new versions with this bad translation from a bad source. And it is infecting the churches that you see around you who are dying. And there is an inoculation. It's called the King James Bible. And if you use the King James Bible, you won't fall for this stuff because it does not teach it. This present world is evil according to Galatians 1.4. Why are preachers standing up and saying it's wonderful? Because they're infected with Vaticanus. Galatians 1.4 says about Jesus, who gave Himself for our sins that He might deliver us from this present evil world. Do you want that to go on forever and ever? Amen? According to the will of God and our Father. He's delivered us from this present world. Amen. This evil world will pass away. Amen. I didn't put the right uh, text. This is in 1 John. And the world, he's talking about this present world, passeth away. Amen. Is there any doubt? Is anybody having trouble following this? No. no. This world, this present world is evil, and it is passing away. And the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God <laughs> abideth forever. Amen. And there is a world to come. Amen. Luke 18.30 says, Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time? And, read that, in the world to come, life everlasting. You go from this present evil world into the world to come where there is life everlasting to those who believe. Amen. 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 That's why we're told in 1 John 2.15, read that, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's one of the hardest pills to swallow in today's generation. People love this world. People, I mean, they can't wait to get out of the church building so they can put on the world's music and listen to the sex music, fornication music, adultery music, profane blasphemy music. Yeah. And then they can go places where they f- they're a part of the world. They fill in part of the world. And they, they, they want to be around worldly friends. So they don't have very many real Christian friends. They just had worldly friends. And everything's worldly until church day. Mm-hmm. That's just sad. Yes. Amen. We are told not to love the world. You say, we love unsaved people enough to tell them the truth. We love unsaved people enough to preach the gospel and to pray for them. Mm -hmm. You ought to love them enough to not live like them. If you hang out with unsaved people and live just like them, you are not loving them. You love people enough, you tell them the truth, and you live like a Christian you ought to live and invite them to come along. That's how you show love. And our love and affection is to be directed toward Jesus. That's where your love and affection is to be set. When you make every decision in your life, whether you're, we talk about young people making decisions where to go to school, what to major in, whether or not to go to school, or to go to a trade school, or whatever those questions are, and whether or not I'm going to marry, and who to marry, and where I'm going to live, and all these questions, behind them, the motivation is to glorify Jesus. And it will affect the answers that you get in prayer. It will affect your own attitude toward those decisions. Mm -hmm. If your love and affection is is, is directed toward Jesus, and your desire in everything you do is to glorify and please Him, it will change your life. Amen. 
throughout all ages, world without end. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all about Him that is able. Amen. It's all about Him. Make that everything you do. Make that the way you live. Get up in the morning and make it about Jesus. Get up in the morning with the Word. Get up in the morning with prayer. Your morning may start at 4 a.m. like my wife. Or your morning may start at 10 a.m. like me. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Most days I'm up around 7 and I wake up around 10. You got it. But seriously, you may not be a morning person, but whenever you do get your marbles together in the morning, make it about Jesus. In the Word, in prayer. Listen to music. And folks, if you can't find good Christian music, because it is hard to come by, listen to the classical music that doesn't put smut in your ears. Yep. Find alternatives to the crud that's being offered today. Yep. And I'm not saying to tomorrow tell all your unsaved friends you're never speaking to them again. <laughs> I'm saying that you should start to develop a different relationship with anyone who's not a Christian. And also, hey, maybe I've talked to people before who said, I've tried to preach the Gospel to them and they just get nasty with me. Well, then you are finding out that they're really not your friend. Mm -hmm. Because it, they can say what they want to you. A real friend will let you say what you want to them. Amen. And no, you don't shove it on them. And, you know, that, but you should look for an opportunity. And when the opportunity is there, tell them about Jesus. Tell them, uh, preach the Gospel. Share the Gospel with them. And sometimes it does involve a change in friendships. Yes. It can make a change. Sometimes it's involved a change in employment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a change in where you live. It can even change your relationships with blood relatives. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If you are going to live with Jesus as the focus of your love and affection, it's going to happen. Yeah. Amen. It's just that simple. And so you have to then live moment by moment, able to have joy in the knowledge that you're pleasing the Lord. Amen. If your joy is in something else, you're going to be very miserable. But if you're living your moment by moment life with the joy of knowing Jesus and knowing that He's pleased with the way you're living and you're looking for that next world, you're not just earthly minded, but you are heavenly minded, you're going to be happy. You're going to be happier. You're going to have more joy. You're going to have more peace. Mm -hmm. You're going to enjoy life. You know, these books that are being sold, your best life now, all that, it's all it's it's a crock. Amen. It's not based on truth. Amen. You can have a great life, but I'm here to tell you, if you think you're supposed to have your best life now, you are all you're wrong from the very start. Your best life is to come. In the meantime, live for Jesus. He'll make it good. Amen. You can live the abundant life right now. Amen. But it's a question, how do, you, how do you define words like abundant? How do you interpret texts like we read this morning? Mm -hmm. That's what makes or breaks right there. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this message from Your Word. Lord, we're so thankful for being set free by the truth being set free from lies and false teaching and being set free from bondage. And Lord, we're so thankful for Your Holy Spirit, the power that works in us, helping us to grow and mature spiritually, helping us to know what we ought to pray, helping us to accept things according to Your will, knowing that even if You have called on us to suffer, like Mark and Bowden right now, that the suffering is but for a moment. And we are going to enjoy life everlasting in the world to come. Thank You, Lord. We just can't say it enough. We can't praise You enough. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Amen. In Your name we pray. Amen. Oh, they tell me of a home where beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me
Marriage Supper. Hallelujah! Let's go practice. <laughs> Father, we ask you to bless our time, the fellowship, bless the food as we eat. Bless each one with safe travel home. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.